Okay, we're in the computer networking lab, and we need to build two servers for the classroom. These servers are going to serve virtual machines to the students in the class. So we're going to use them for virtualization. Now, instead of going with an enterprise commercial server, we've decided that it'd be a lot more fun and a lot more going with the mode of the class to build our own servers. So this is the first server that we're going to put together today. We've got a case that is a 4U case, or 4-unit case, meaning that it's 4 times 1.75 inches tall. And we're going to um, adapt the case to work with the motherboard that we've purchased. Now, this is a Rosewill case, and it's a, it's a nice server case. It's got a locking front panel so that you can keep your um, people or users that are unauthorized away from the power buttons and the USB ports on the front, right? And it's got three large fans in the middle here. Now we're going to need to remove these fans to get the motherboard into the case. Um, the motherboard, if you can see it here on the left, is a... Go ahead and move that into the shot a little bit. The motherboard here on the left is a server motherboard and it's a 12 by 13 inch motherboard so it's it's a little bit larger than a standard motherboard um, given that it's a server motherboard so we had to make sure that our case that we purchased was going to be large enough to fit a 12 by 13 inch motherboard alright so um, go ahead and these guys are going to in the class are going to remove that bar from the center alright go ahead and start doing that and they're also going to remove that those three fans from the middle so we can get the motherboard in there. Okay, Brock, will you put in the back plate? Okay, Brock's going to put in the back plate where the various motherboard ports will push through on the back side. We've got Brock here. His website is gotechleverage.com. We've also got Steve here, his website is Hacker Homebrew, <laughs> hackerhomebrew.com, which is down at the moment. And um, okay, so we've got the back plate in. Now, the next thing I want to point out is these standoffs. Now, the motherboard needs to go onto this back plate here, and you can see the little standoffs that are on there. Now, the standoffs need to match the holes on the motherboard. Brock, can you hold that up so we can see the holes in the motherboard? Now, we've got the standoffs that are in there right now just kind of default set. And we have extra holes just in case the holes don't match the motherboard. So you see, here's the, here's the motherboard. And you can point out to one of the holes here. All right, so there's one of the holes. So you need to have basically a quick look and a map to make sure that the standoffs, why don't you point to one of the standoffs, Brock? There we go. Let's point to that one right there. Yeah. Th those we can take out with a um, socket wrench and replace as necessary. But it, as it so happens, this motherboard, even with all those holes on there, still does not have the right holes to fit all of the holes on our motherboard. So Brock is going to drill us a couple of extra holes so that it will work with our motherboard. Okay, so Brock has dropped the motherboard into the case and he's putting in a couple of screws where there are standoffs underneath to hold the motherboard in place and then we're going to mark the spots where we need to drill a couple of extra holes. Now what's the danger if we decide, oh, we don't need those couple extra standoffs and we're just going to leave it as is? When you're putting in your, your RAM, you're going to be applying pressure down. The current standoffs are in a bad location because they're sitting right underneath these dim slots. So they'll make connections with the, the little pieces of metal on the back side of the motherboard, which is a very, very bad thing. Okay. 
All right, so now we're going to see you. Are you ready to make those marks? Yeah. Exactly. All right, so you grab the pencil. Our stellar piece of equipment here. All right, so he's marking the couple of places, the two holes that don't have a hole on the metal back plate so that we're going to have to drill those two holes. Brock was able to pull out that back plate um, and this is going to be good because then it won't leave any metal dust fragments inside the case or anything like that. And all it took was removing a few screws, let's say like right here. here. You can see there's one right there. So we just removed a couple of screws, pull it right out, and now we're going to, it's a safer environment to drill the holes. All right, go for it, Brock. that you marked it with graphite ahead of time. All right, so we're done screwing the holes. You can see there's the dust fragments come off. Yeah, they look great. A little bit smaller than the other holes, but I think we can, you think it'll fit through? Uh, well, we'll make sure it does. All right. All right, Brock, what are you doing now? All right, I'm going to tap the holes that I just drilled with another screw. And why are you doing that? Uh, it just gives thread something for the standoff to bite onto. And then once it grabs a hold, back it back out. And now you can start to see it's starting to look like the other holes. All right, start to put a little thread in there. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Are you going to, well, this will be the test, if we can get these standoffs in there. Alright. Now typically this is not something you would you necessarily do all the time. How often do you have to make your own holes into the case? Not very often. Not normally very often, right? Yeah, normally they're they got enough holes for everything. But this extra large server motherboard. Yeah, there's there's so many different variations of everything. Great. All right, so Brock has put the plate back in, and now he's screwing it down into the case to hold it in place. All right. And now, once this is done, we'll be able to hopefully get that motherboard in place, and every hole on the motherboard will have a standoff keeping it off of the metal from the back of the case. All right. All right, let's try it. Go ahead, let's grab that motherboard. Okay. All right, good job, Brock. Brock uh, has his own business building computers and selling computers and fixing computers. So he's the perfect man for this job to demonstrate what we're doing. I don't tighten these screws down, I just set them in there. You don't tighten them down, you're just setting them in there? Yep. All until, right. Not all the way, huh? Wait yeah. until you yeah, see you if get you everything to line up. Uh, I need more screws over there, please. Guys, okay. all right. Okay, the rest of the screws? Yep. They look like this. They have the Phillips part with a flat ring around it. Perfect. I've used other types of screws to screw down motherboards, though. Mm -hmm. Can you use different types, or is this this is the nice because it has that flat edge? It's just as long as it matches the thread type, and uh, as long as the head's not big enough that it protrudes outside the the area, the protected area. 